Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. I'm Oliver and today it's episode three of Breeding British Birds. Now, in the past week, we've had a real move forward and change in the bird room with the native finches and the canaries. Last week, we looked at some of the native finches that had already built up and began to lay their clutches. We now have four clutches this week, week which we'll look at soon. And then we'll also have uh, other birds to look at. We've got more nests, we've got more eggs, and even more movement from the natives, as well as some young, uh, you know, younger birds actually getting on the sticks for the first time. So that's all going to be in today episode so I hope you enjoy. So to start off with I had a question from a subscriber uh, I believe it was either on email or it could have been on Facebook but either way uh, something that I thought I'd share with you guys now I've talked about this in several different videos um, but we've never really covered it in an actual full video, so I will do a full video on this uh, just to explain what I'm aiming for. But it was about lighting uh, and how I do, use the lighting, the, what type of lighting I use, uh, the timers and everything like that. So just to, to, in simple terms, how I use lighting is these are LED strip lights. I run them through this shed and we have another shed which has got a bit of a different um, lighting system but very very similar and I run them on a timer now this timer I have to set on about 45 minutes after uh, sunrise and 45 minutes turns off before sunset so what it does is enhances the natural light rather than replaces it it keeps the natural daylight cycle because ultimately that's what's best for all the native birds uh, yeah that's what they've evolved to for thousands of years so i keep them on the natural daylight uh, cycle rather than uh, adding extra daylight hours and what and that's just my preference anyway doesn't mean you shouldn't do it i know a lot of canary fanciers do it uh, zebra finch breeders and what but that's how i do it um, and the, the timers just mean that when i have them come off or uh, come on 45 minutes before or after sunset uh, or sunrise then uh, it just means that the birds aren't suddenly plunged into light from complete darkness and aren't, plunged, uh, aren't plunged into complete darkness from complete light uh, and you'll find especially during the breeding season that is very important because one the birds need to find a place to roost and two the birds need to return to their nests so the last thing that I'd want is a hen to be off the nest feeding at 8.30 and then uh, the lights turn off and it's pitch black because she's not gonna get back to that nest, whether that be chicks or eggs. And we're just gonna have eggs that go cold or chicks that go cold. And uh, you know, we're gonna have dead in shells or, or dead chicks. So that's just how I eliminate that. And that's how I do my lighting system. So I hope that answers your question and I hope that everyone else finds that useful. So hopefully you remember from last week's episode, we had two pairs of uh, green finches. We had a pied cockbird with a normal hen. Um, now we've got one pair sat on their eggs, no problem. And the other pair, which were in the right hand side, uh, sadly, she, um, she, she did attempt to sit without an issue really. But she just kept, it was either her or the cockbird. They weren't happy with the nest and they kept ragging it. And I, I, I was cautious about this and was concerned because that's why I'd originally took the eggs away and set them all at the same time. Um, and I was right. What she did is that I came in uh, about the day actually of the of the previous episode release, so probably last Saturday. Came in, uh, the nest was on the floor, and I was gutted. I thought, oh no, you know, we, we've got the heart ink start starting already with the natives, uh, and just breeding birds in general. And the nest was on the floor. I'm thinking, great, we've lost however many eggs. Um, put my hand in the nest because I thought I'd try and thankfully I don't know how and I, all I believe is that she's, what she's done is whipped the nest from underneath them uh, but all the five eggs were sat in the bottom of the nest pan um, so I was very lucky and very fortunate now obviously she wasn't going to sit them and I couldn't risk losing them so what we've done is we've moved them into feeders so to start with we've moved four of the eggs actually into a nest down here so it's that nest box there we've got the red-eyed satinettes as the feeders now we had their eggs i candled them actually that day because she, the hen had been sat a week they were clear so it did it was a bit of a blessing in disguise although annoying that we haven't got uh, the the full eggs from her what we have got is now a feeder who's suitable for green finches so we've got four of the green finch eggs 
underneath the satinette and we're going to move the fifth one there today i put the other egg because the hen was sat on four i wanted to just replace them with four just while she started you know getting started with uh sitting so i've put the other green finch egg with a nest of fives uh, and we're going to have a look at their eggs now and we're actually going to uh, move one of the green finch eggs which is under the five to the other pair of nucleus so they'll have five green finch eggs and hopefully five uh, young green finches to rear in the next week or so so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the uh, satinette canary hen uh, on the nest and she's got four green finch eggs and we're going to move the fifth one underneath her but to start with i want to make sure those eggs are full so i'm going to just give them a quick candle uh, and we can hopefully see some development so she's looking happy already um well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but let, let's, uh, we'll just move her off. All four eggs are there. So what I've got is just a little torch here. Um, it's, it's, it's just a little one, um, nothing special there, just little LEDs. Um, and we'll get that on the egg. Now, not great because it's not dark, but the egg isn't clear. So that means that egg's full. So that's uh, one full green finch. That's two. That's number three. And that's number four. So we've got four green finch eggs that are full. So that's fantastic. Um, four full green finch eggs. So that might be a little bit busy for the uh, the new colours, but that's why we've got them in. They're here in their own right because they are nice birds and I do have plans in the future, hopefully, with them for muling. Uh, but they are also feeders for some of the larger native finches. So we're now going to have a look at the other green finch egg. Hopefully that's full and we'll move it into this nest. So this is the other pair of fives. We had the, uh, the clear ticked cock, um, sorry, the clear buff hen to a yellow ticked cock now. Uh, they've got four eggs where we, we've set them uh, a week ago actually with the green finch. So we'll take a look now uh, quickly at that green finch egg and uh, we'll have a look at her eggs just while we're here and we will put the green finch egg in with the new colours uh, just wanted to to get it in there and get it started just to make sure that the hen's covering it so um i'm taking the nest out and removing it just because it's easier to get to the eggs that way and then we can we can candle them quite easily now the hen won't be too bothered because we're not sitting here for ages Perfect, so uh, we'll have a good look at that. As you can see, that's a green finch egg. A little bit clear at the top, but the rest is growing, so that's a young green finch. So we'll move that into a nest shortly. We'll just take a look at her own eggs now. Ah, okay. As you can see, that's what a clear egg looks like. So that's a clear five egg, so that's one clear. Two. three and four so because of that we're getting the green finch egg out into the other nest and we will do something else uh, with her eggs shortly so we're just going to move the green finch egg in here so uh, she's now got five green finch eggs to cover uh, it shouldn't be an issue she was sat on four of her own and then we've swapped them out in for green finches. So we'll see how they get on uh, and, and, and fingers crossed. Uh, all going well, we should have five baby green finches, hopefully by next week's episode. So even though it is slightly annoying that we've got a, a five on four of our own clear eggs now, it does give us the opportunity to actually use her for rearing some other birds. Now, um, I've, I've been coming up with ideas for if I do have a feeder come spare, which I now do, what I'm going to foster out. And I have a good answer. We're going to look at the Norwich. So over the past week, we've seen the Norwich really change. We had, from uh, last week's episode, we had two nests fully built up, but no eggs. Now this week, we've got eggs from both pairs of the Norwich. So we've got normal variegated cock in with the uh, buff ticked hen. And we've got the uh, the yellow 
hen in there with a, a white and blue cock. Now it's definitely a cock, although it looks like it's acting like a hen in the ne in the nest there with a the hen. I've vented it and it's a cock and semen tread. So uh, we've got eggs. So we've got actually three eggs from this hen. Now this is the, the better pair of Norwich. Uh, both, do both definitely better quality birds. Uh, I, I removed the eggs and uh, I set them about four days ago. As you can see there, got some Norwich canary eggs, which is a great sight. Um, I was unsure whether I would breed them this year, and I thankfully have. And then we've got this pair here with those nice four. So uh, we've got a pair with four and a pair with three. Now, as some of you may know, Norwich are notoriously difficult to breed because they won't rear their own young or sometimes sit the eggs. Now, I've not had an issue so far. We've had them set about four or five days now and uh, both hens are sitting very well all day every day uh, and, and, and not really getting off the nest except when I've had to have a look or just for food and water. Now I don't want to uh, have to take a risk and see how they get on you know we're gonna have to see how they get on um, and I'd, I'd rather not lose some knowledge let's try and secure a first round so what I've decided is with this being the better quality pair of Norwich and what I believe might be less likely to rear their own young, I'm going to take the three eggs from her. Uh, I know when they were set, so we'll just move them straight under her with uh, four of her own clear eggs and we'll get her rearing some Norwich, hopefully. I've seen this pair threading so many times. It's an amazing sight to see. Um, you know, I, I it was unsure whether I would breed the Norwich and I've been very lucky and we've got some eggs and I've seen them mate so fingers crossed they are full so what I'm going to do is remove her eggs and get them under her and in replace I'm just going to put the eggs I remove underneath just so in the event that the other hen leaves the nest we have a Norwich um, which can she can take her eggs back should she need to uh, and for this pair well I'm going to leave them to it they are quite active birds and they are smaller birds. So I think out of the two weighing up the odds, I think there's less chance of those rearing the young than those. So uh, in that case, we'll get the eggs moved now uh, and see how they get on. So because we've moved those eggs out, what it's going to give us the opportunity to do is have uh, that the feeders rear those Norwich. Um, and obviously the feeders aren't as desirable as the Norwich or the natives. So uh, it's just making it a priority list. I'm sure we all do it. Um, and just, you know, w w let's get some young natives and some young Norwich in before we look at trying to get a few feeders. Um, after all, I do, uh, you know, my special, I specialise in natives. I do have the Norwich on the uh, the case that I do want to do mules and hybrids as well. So it'll give us the opportunity uh, to, to do that. I can see the hen's already on those eggs we've put underneath. And for the Norwich hen, I've just put some pot eggs under her. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that hen takes to the Norwich eggs nicely. And hopefully she will. And then we'll remove those eggs from the Norwich hen and let her go for another round, which we could try and trust her to risk. But let's secure that first round before um, we, we, we go taking chances with that. So just before we move on to the rest of the native birds that we, we're going to look at today, the red poles uh, and some more developments outside and, and green finches and, and, and so forth, um, we've had uh, you know, another interesting week with the young birds. So we've got some yellow my, um, yellow dimorphics have just uh, fledged the nest two days ago. Uh, so we'll take a look at them and then we'll have a look at the uh, the feed of fives that are being reared. The, their, uh, yeah, the, the, their rung now and I don't think it'll be too long. You know, hopefully in the next week or so we'll see them on the sticks as well. So starting off, we have uh, the two yellow dimorphic chicks here. Um, we've got the eldest one at the front and the younger one at the back. Uh, they fledged about two days ago. Now, they all just tend to sit on the floor. Um, I think it's going to take them another few days before they're really active on the perches. I've, I've found they have been on the perches, no problem, but generally more than anything, they've, uh, they've been on the floor having mum and dad feed them. So they're getting on very well. Um, both fully feathered and active enough now, so they've fledged the nest. So actually the next step with those youngsters 
is to uh, remove the nest. I'm going to get this, clear it out, uh, soak that in some disinfectant, uh, and we'll, we'll get a fresh one up for the uh, the parents to let them go for another round. Whether we let them go for uh, another round of um, th their own, or we just have them as feeders, which is a bit more likely uh, for something that we'll look at a little later on, which is what they might be feeding. So that's our yellow dimorphics. The chicks are now out the nest, and uh, it won't be long before uh, they're they're more um, independent. And then we'll come to the, the feeder fights. So we've got these little guys here. Um, we saw these guys hatch in last week's episode, uh, I believe it was. So um, getting on okay, getting on well. As you can see, there's a one chick a little bit more developed than the rest on the left. We've got uh, the black eyed, looks to be a clear possibly. We've got a red eyed cinnamon. I'm going to get another black eyed, uh, possibly a clear. I had seen signs of possible variegation, but uh, I'm not too sure. But either way, it doesn't matter. We've got some nice little feeders uh, that are getting on well. You know, a little bit of a greedy one here to the left, taking a lot more food than uh, the rest of them, but uh, no nothing to, to be too concerned about. He is the oldest one by uh, just over a day, so he will take a little bit more. Uh, and we'll just make sure that those guys, the smaller two, are getting on well. But they are getting fed, and I've watched them get fed quite well. So uh, th they're getting a nice mix of ed egg food at the moment, as well as pearl morbide, uh, peas, and broccoli, and other things I'll supplement them, which I'll do in a separate video. So now we'll move on to the native birds. So we're going to make a start with the red poles, as always. Um, been a really busy week with the red poles and really exciting so i've got plenty to show you and a real lot of exciting developments which i hope you find as exciting as i do uh yeah i've been all giddy all week because we've got some really good birds on eggs so we'll take a look now so to start us off with the red poles we'll go to the pair we visited last week it's just the begin so we've got the agate pastel cockbird to the cinnamon hen now she is on five eggs we're going to have to candle them uh, I'll candle them straight after this and we'll take a look and hopefully they'll be full. She's a lovely bird, absolutely stunning. Um, you know, really, really nice, really good feather on her. Um, and, and, and she's just really doing well uh, as a mother so far. She sat very tightly on the five. So fingers crossed with those guys that we get some full eggs from this pair. We'll next move over here now. It's been interesting with these guys. We've got the hen shut up there. She only laid three eggs. And I wouldn't be able to tell you why, uh, but that's just some birds. She's on three. As you can see, a little bit less uh, calm than her sister, and, and she's off them. So there is three in there. Now, I need to candle them because what I have noticed with this pair is every single time I've come in at night, she doesn't usually tend to be on the nest and it takes some encouragement to get on there. So I've got to turn the lights back on and make sure she's on. And that's not due to being plunged into darkness. I don't know why. So I'm sceptical with this pair. Are the eggs full or are they not? Now, I hope they will be and I hope she's sitting all right with them and that they will be fine and we'll get some youngsters from them. Uh, but it might not be this round. So it might end up where we put these under some feeders as well but we'll have to see what happens uh, when I candle them a little later uh, and, and maybe we'll just give her another chance with another round rather than uh, you know, let, letting her just sit this round that isn't, is clear, possibly. So we'll, we'll see how they get on. So that's the pair, the Isabel Cock to a Cinnamon Hen. Coming down to this pair, we have the normal Pastel Cock Bird to a Cobalt Hen. This is uh, the sister of my um, national, uh, not novice national winner. So she's, she's great, she's quite a steady bird, not too bothered that I'm even here with the camera, uh, which, which is really good. Um, she is on, I believe, five eggs. Again, we'll candle them after we'll take a look, after we've took a look at these guys around the shed. Um, hopefully the eggs are full, uh, which would be nice, and we'll get some little you know nice little pastel carriers so let's see what comes from that so that's great that's the third pair of red poles we come to this pair well we've got developments but uh the hen does seem to like to trash nests 
uh, which she builds. She hasn't laid an egg yet, though, but that's okay. Uh, you know, red poles generally in the wild will go down from May, so it is a bit early, but I'm not too concerned. Come down to this pair, we've got a Cobalt Cock Split Isabel to a Cobalt Hen. Um, a few developments. They have tried to build, but again, not too sure. So we'll see how they get on, but I don't think it'll be too long. Now we have this possible pair. Now I've had a little bit of a, uh, a mishap with these guys where I believe the cobalt you're looking at, I um, plucked its chest last year, I bred this one last year and uh, plucked its chest and it came through normal so I thought hen probably let's just check again so re-plucked the feathers uh, and had her on colour feed for uh, with carafil again clear. So I was fairly convinced that this was a hen. Now, upon vent sexing, because I thought I'd seen it squealing, it looks to be a cockbird. So, it looks like we could have a, a cobalt cock in with a, 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 a normal split A gate, split, is, uh, split cinnamon, split Isabel cock. So, it could be two cockbirds, but I'm going to leave them just for the moment. And if it needs to, I could try and get another hen in. But either way, if it means we've got two spare cockbirds, we can definitely float them over some other hens or, or do something. Uh, and one of the main reasons is that we, we look at this nest and there's no attempt whatsoever uh, as well. So we'll have to see how they get on. We'll come into the other pairs now. This is where it gets a little bit more exciting, a little bit more interesting. We've got the amazing hen, normal hen there with the nice uh, normal pied cockbird which have not too far from built up which is great so i'm really excited with that that's one of the better you know one of the best red poles we've got um you know she, she's a lovely bird she's done you know, i believe her, her line's very successful from mr jack lloyd um and, and has done you know she's done good in the online shows that i've showed her in at least uh, obviously a bit different uh, representation but either way nice bird with uh, a decent nest coming on so that's great and then we'll come down to this pair this is where it gets even more exciting we've got a normal sorry a, a cinnamon cock bird in with the cinnamon hen who uh, took uh, parents took silver at the world show and she is on a nest of five so what a great sight i am over the moon with this pair what a great what you know what a great sight to see some lovely little red poll eggs in there not going to candle because she hasn't been sat too long and i don't want to have any you know any chance of ruining those eggs um and just because i don't think we're going to be able to see anything which is one of the main reasons but either way that's great so hopefully some lovely little cinnamons from this pair and then finally we'll come to this pair we have the normal split feo cock to a normal hen <sighs> not really much interest but uh, again it is early so we'll just have to see how how they get on over the next few weeks they are in condition at least the cock bird is the hen is fit as ever uh, so we'll just have to see how they get on hopefully we will get some eggs so I've just candled the red poll eggs and sadly I do have to report we have got some clear eggs. It's a shame, um, sadly not much I can do about that, um, you know, the, the clear now. So let's try and fix that for the next time. So uh, the egg eight pastel cock to the cinnamon hen, they're clear. And same for the Isabel cock to the uh, cinnamon hen, they're clear as well. So sadly that is eight eggs which are, have been clear, annoying. Um, and, and you know, we'll have to try and fix that and try and get it moving forward. But you do have to take into account it's still early. We are at around the tw you know the 20th, the third week in uh, April now. So what red poles in the wild anyway wouldn't go down to nest until May. Um, and th these are earlier than I've ever had red poles go down. So it's not too concerning and not too much of a blow. Um, so what we have to do then is, because of that, we're going to remove the eggs because there's no point in a hen sitting on eggs that aren't going to hatch. Um, and we're going to have to fix this problem. So how are we going to get these eggs full? 
well to start off with that's going to be a change in water so in the water i'm now going to add some fertility vitamins and some conditioning supplements because we want to make sure the cockbirds are going to fill the eggs now whether it was on the cockbird was he ready did he uh, did he uh, thread the hen we don't know uh, and you know same situation D did the hen not even squat for the cockbird and um, maybe she's not ready and the eggs haven't been full for whatever reason so yeah, you know, that, that that's why now I've got to take into account as well. These are inexperienced birds. Um, the hen, the two hens we bred last year, so um, that was their first eggs and their first round. So sometimes that does happen. And the cockbirds, well, they're last year's as well. So uh, th yeah, th this is new to them completely. So uh, it will be a case of just giving them some supplements in the water and a bit in the food. We'll get them on some more egg food and some more conditioning. Seeing, let's hope that. By next week's episode, we'll see a change, maybe some eggs and uh, hopefully full eggs. But I do have to report, which is very good, we've got a cobalt hen with a normal pastel cock. She's on five and they're all full. Uh, and I have actually just, I thought I'll just drop the light on the cinnamon ones from uh, the, the World Show uh, Silver Daughter Pair. The, you know, the, the good cinnamon and uh, all five of them are full. I'm pleased to report. So that's great. Uh, we've got two nests of red poles with full eggs. Uh, five full eggs so that's 10 between the two and we've got 10 that are clear so we'll get that fixed now and uh, hopefully by the time it comes to the next round the egg, these guys eggs will be full now for the past week or so we've had the green finches on eggs we've got the normal hen in here with a pied cockbird behind me we have the uh, normal hen with uh, another pied cockbird now the ones behind me here are actually the ones that i've removed the eggs from we've got them under the new colors as feeders and um, for these guys they are sat on their own eggs so that's great so not you know not much has happened over the past week nothing really happens out while the hens sit in um but I think now that she's been sat just over a week, let's give the eggs a candle and uh, hopefully by next week we might have some baby greenfinches to show you. Just for a quick look, there you are. You can see the egg is full. So that's great. I'm going to candle the rest now just off camera. But that's one of five full at least. So for the rest of the birds, we've got some full green finch eggs there and we've got some full ones in the other shed. So that's fantastic. Uh, and we've got some full red pole eggs. So I'm really pleased to see that, uh, you know, it's great to have the natives finally starting after what's been quite a long winter. Um, so, well, actually, we'll go to the birds outside first. So we've got the Siberian goldfinches outside. We've got the Siberian bullfinches. We've got a pair of green finches, which is my best pair, and we have the crossbills. So um, to start with, we've got the gold finches building up now. It's really good and it's a really positive sign. So we've got the egg eight goldfinch hen. She has completely built a nest. No egg yet, but uh, yeah, I imagine that'll come in the coming days. Um, they have built, she's obviously paired up with the normal cock bird in there. We've got the other hen in there. And I'm hoping we'll pair up with him as well and we'll be able to run them and work them as a trio. Uh, but it's great to see that we've got a, a, a nest being built by the goldfinches. So hopefully by next week we will have uh, some developments with those guys and we'll have some eggs. So really pleased to announce that. Secondly, which is very exciting for me, is that we have the green finches with four eggs. Now, uh, that is a normal hen with uh, a yeah, good good normal hen my best normal hen uh, to the best normal cock bird you know what a brilliant bird he is i've witnessed the mating several times every day uh well yeah i've come home from wherever and seen them mate i've, I've seen them mate while i've been just you know just watching them and, and enjoying the birds so let's hope those eggs are full i can't i can't see a reason why not so Let's see what happens there, uh, and we'll give those guys, uh, you know, let the eggs from those a, a candle in next week's video. So let's hope that they're full. Uh, the Siberian bullfinches, they haven't made a move yet, but the hen is carrying material constantly. I think it's just a matter of time before they actually do make the final decision for where they're going to nest. And the crossbills, we're going to be moving the crossbills this weekend. As I said in last week's video, uh, I was tempted to move them and tr work out a change. Well, after observing them and just seeing how they're behaving, they clearly don't, uh, yeah, they're just not bothered with where they are. So we're just going to swap the, the flights around uh, pretty much. We're, we're going to move, yeah, the, the, just 
take the pairs and put them in the other flight and just see how they get on. Uh, I'll probably replenish a load of the uh, Christmas tree and the cover in there just because it's better and you know make it fresh. We'll clean the nest sites down, we'll put some more nest sites or different ones and let's hope that it makes them click before it's too late for them to breed. So we'll just do a bit of a quick update now on the mules and hybrids, how they're getting on and have we got any developments? Well, we've got the green finch mule pair. She's begin build, she's began building, sorry. Um, again, I think it's taking them, uh, or at least her, a bit of time to get used to the new cockbird she's in with. Obviously she's not been used to, to having him, him in there with her. So let's just hope that it works and that we will get some nice green finch mule from them. Um, and we'll just have to see how they get on over the next few weeks. I do think with these guys in here at least, it is taking them a little bit longer uh, than the rest of the natives outside and in the other bird room, but they are nothing to worry about too much. We've got the Red Pulse Siskin Hybrid. They're getting on well, uh, but no nest yet. I've actually made a bit of a change. If you remember last week uh, and previously, we had the nest on the outside. I could just tell the hen wasn't bothered. Um, she, she, she started going in the nest to start with when I first put the nest in and after that uh, I think she just lost a bit of interest to it to be honest and she, didn't, she clearly didn't take well to the nest site so what I've done is just moved the nest site on the inside so we still have the access door here easy to get into the eggs and the nest uh, no real building there's a bit of material in there but it's no serious attempt at the moment um, and it means we can still access the eggs there while making the hen a bit more comfortable with having the nest on the inside. We've got the siskins actually, we'll have a quick look at those guys. Well, we've got uh, two nests being built now, nests in both of the corners. I've uh, put the liners in, uh, obviously the, the, the sort of the Cecil fibre liners and uh, they're, they're getting on all right with those. They are building, uh, but again, it's a bit of a, um, a half-hearted attempt at building. No full nest built in there yet. We'll uh, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll get some moss in there for them now and just see how they uh, respond to that. But they've been taking moss, they've been taking uh, cocoa fiber and uh, sea salt, and uh, ma mainly that sort of thing actually at the moment, at least. So that's great. We've got, um, yeah, that's 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 a really good sign. So I'm hoping that. You know, there might be something to show with the Siskins uh, in in uh, episode four, which is next week. So that's great. And then finally, we've got the uh, the goldfinch mule pair actually in the other uh, on the other bird room. We've got the the new colour cross hen with the goldfinch cock and they uh, sh she's completely built a nest now pretty much she needs a little bit more lining and then i think it'll be about done and uh, we'll, we'll have an egg so hopefully by next week you will see some eggs from the canary which hopefully will have been full um yeah will be full filled by the goldfinch cock so that's great um and a bit of something new so up here we had the uh the goldfinch mule pair we had the goldfinch cock with the red-eyed satinette hen now after last week the the gold the um canary hen just took a turn for the worst to be honest uh i've still got her and i've actually put her in down here with the red pole mule um just because it's a bit it's just a bit more quieter he's not really that bothered about her being in there and um she just seems to not be right. It isn't disease, and I know it's not disease because I've been I've been watching for a while now. And I think what it is is because she's a red eye. I think she's just going blind um, and showing no interest. Now I don't want to waste a goldfinch, so I've put her in with the, the red pole mule just because it'll keep him happy, and I'm sure she'll be happy enough anyway. Um, for the goldfinch cock, we've moved him into the flight, which is connected to the shed outside for the youngsters, uh, just to keep him fit. And I do hopefully have a, a bird coming in at the weekend who will be going up here to go with the goldfinch cock. Now, spoiler, it isn't actually a goldfinch hen. Um, we've got the Siberian goldfinches. They're the only goldfinch I want to breed this year, at least. Uh, but it's something else to do a mule or a hybrid with. So I'll. Uh, Hopefully have that my next week's video, some a bit something different, something for you to enjoy. So that does bring us to the end of episode four. So I hope you've enjoyed it and found some useful tips in this video. Um, so I'd like to start what now, uh, saying a big thank you to Mac Finch and Nelson Rato of Natives in Norwich. So I've now got a breeding record from Nelson. Uh, Nelson makes these Mac Finch runner competition, uh, which ended last weekend uh, with 
basically just taking photos of your pairs and we and i was lucky enough that one of the goldfinch pairs came up so that was great um and i, I won a breeding diary uh you know a breeding record so that's fantastic we've got loads of pages everything you need to know is on here everything you need to write down it's really good really useful so huge thank you there to mac finch and nelson um now i'd like to just say uh, quickly it's been actually a year since i began uh really doing these youtube videos uh, and when i properly launched uh, my youtube channel now i've always ha i've had a youtube channel for quite a few years i've posted random videos on there which which aren't up now um but if you look at some of my older videos from uh, introducing oc avery which was actually a year ago on the 24th of april so that's possibly today if you're watching this on the saturday when it's released um and before that we did a, i did a quick short clip of a zebra finch like three or four years ago which i bred um we got videos on there of the crossbills when they started to breed before I started doing these videos, um, you know, last early last year. So um, within that time, we've gained 3,350 or 60 or so subscribers. So huge thank you to everyone that subscribed. It's, you know, it's amazing. Thank you for all the support um, and, and for following along. So I hope you're enjoying the content you've got now. Uh, and I'm constantly trying to improve it, get it better, get it more um informative and and uh, entertaining so i hope you're all finding it useful so anyway well thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed this video and you want to follow along with more episodes of breeding british birds then please hit the subscribe button down below if you've enjoyed today's video leave us a like get your notification bell on and share the video with someone who you think would find these videos useful and enjoy them so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one